All right, well, I wanna welcome all of our campuses, the South Shore, Gulf Coast, those that are joining us online, Facebook Live, so excited to have you guys to week three of our series entitled Above the Noise. Come on, can we just welcome all those that are joining us? So excited. Hey, I wanna just say to all those of you uh, that are in the almost 1,100 small groups, uh, we're getting great feedback, great reports. Uh, I wanna encourage you to stay strong in your small groups. Uh, there's something about, here's what we believe at Church of the King, uh, that life change really does happen best in circles. You ever been in a, a message like this and, and you say, Pastor, man, I wish I, I wanted to stop and ask you a question, but I couldn't. That's what you do in small groups. So I want to encourage you. Matter of fact, I want to encourage you guys, even when this series is over, man, those will be some of the best connections and best friends that you'll ever meet. Last week, we spoke about how God wants to speak to us through the Bible. We're in a series talking about how that we can live above the noise. Every single one of us, we have noisy, cluttered lives. I gave you some statistics week one, talking about all the text messages. 840 billion text messages per month right now. I want you to think about how many bits of information is coming to us. It's amazing all the phone calls, all the emails, all the text messages. Our lives can get consumed with a lot of noise. The problem is, is it can drown out God's voice. We're in a series talking about the ways that God wants to speak to us. Last week, I talked about the primary way in which God speaks to us through, through his word. Today, I'm going to talk about how God will speak through the Holy Spirit. Next week, I'm going to talk to you guys about how God will speak through godly counsel. Everybody is getting counsel. Most people are just getting it from themselves. The question is, those people you're talking to, are they giving you God's perspective? Week four, I'm going to talk about how God still, question, pastor, does God still speak? You know, the Bible, I'll see Abram had a vision and this guy had a dream. Does God still speak through dreams and visions? I'm going to talk to you about how I believe the Bible is clear, clear that he will speak to us through dreams and visions. The final week, I'm going to talk about how God will speak to us through circumstances. How do you discern? Listen to this. How do you know whether the circumstance in your life is not something that the devil's brought in? You know, there's times where the Bible says, Paul said, Satan buffered me. I tried to come to them over and over, but say, how do you know if it's a hindrance from Satan or, or if God has brought a circumstance into our life to protect us from ourselves? How do you know if you're supposed to rebuke the thing or Ask God for wisdom in the thing. I'm going to talk to you about circumstances the last day. Today, I want to talk to you about how God will speak to us through the voice of the Holy Spirit. All right, here's the deal. Uh, this year was a big milestone in my life. I turned 50, and uh, I began to think about the different moments in my life. I began to write down some things and, and different critical moments in my life. And I wrote something down because I was thinking about when was the first time I heard the voice of God? I became a Christian October 27, 1987, and I gave my heart to Christ. I was at Tulane University. I was in a Bible study uh, with a bunch of young college kids, and we were all sitting around. And again, I was invited by two girls to this Bible study. Uh, you know, I wasn't interested. I say disrespectfully in Jesus, but I was interested in them, and I really mean that. So they invited me to this Bible study. I kept thinking, man, what are people going to say to me? Oh my gosh, a bunch of Jesus freak people. And, uh, but, but that night, I gloriously got born again. I gave my heart to Christ. Now, that was October 27th. For two months, my old friends, man, they were just riding me. Come on, Steve. Come on, man. Come on, go out with us, man. Let's do it, man. So four times, four times, I let them talk me into it. And I'm telling you something, man. I, I, let me just say, I, I didn't go out passing out tracks for Jesus. Let me just say that. I mean, it was, it was, it was a blow up in the wrong way. It was, I mean, and, and so I'll never forget the last time I went out with them. First time I heard the voice of God. Now I'm a Christian. I went out with those guys on New Year's Eve, 1987, and I got drunk out of my mind, literally. I never forget. I woke up the next morning. I was under so much conviction because I was a Christian. And the, whole, the first time I can remember God speaking to me, and God says, call your friends on the phone, tell them that I've changed your life, and that you're never going back again. 
I never forget getting on that phone. I was so scared. I called my first friend, Rob. I said, Rob, I'm never going out partying with you guys again. Man, I'm never, I'm telling you, I love Christ. God has spoken to me, and I don't care if you ever talk to me again. He said, Well, Steve, man, you're, and I said, I'm telling you, man, God spoke to me. I remember calling my friend Vince up. I said, man, God spoke to me. It was so strong just now. Vince said this. I was waiting to see if you were going to call me and say this. I actually want to give my heart to Christ as well. He got born again that next day. I called my girlfriend up at the time. I said, I'm not going out. I'm not partying. I'm not doing anything. She got born again. I'm going to tell you something. How many know there are people waiting for us to make a decision to sell out for Christ? Are y'all with me? But it was the voice of God. It wasn't my imagination. It wasn't something that I thought. It was the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, you cannot stay the same when God speaks to you. I want to talk to you about how God, the Holy Spirit, will speak to you. It'll revolutionize your life. Do you realize the advantage that we have as Christ followers when the Holy Spirit speaks to us? God will speak to you about your future. God will speak to you about your present. God will speak about your past. Businessmen and women, God will speak to you. The insights, he'll encourage you. Listen, he'll warn you. He'll love you. He'll, listen, he will give you insights. What an advantage to hear God. God, the Holy Spirit, God wants to speak to us. Week one, I said, God is a what? Say it, a communicator. The issue is not whether or not God is speaking. The issue is, are we are we listening? The question is, who is speaking? It's God, the Holy Spirit. Everybody say Holy Spirit. Now, I know people get freaked out when you start talking about God, the Holy Spirit. You know, like I can deal with the Father. I mean, I, I get that. You know, I had a father, right? And Jesus, you know, he's kind of, you know, I've seen the movie, you know, and I can catch Jesus, but Holy Spirit. I don't know about the Holy Spirit thing. You know, a lot of people have misunderstandings about who the Holy Spirit is. They think the Holy Spirit's kind of a divine force, kind of Casper the ghost, maybe. You know what I'm talking about? Particularly, you open the King James Bible, it's holy what? Say it. Ghost. Oh, go, man, it's, it's like, you know, extraterrestrial stuff. So I don't know about this holy ghost stuff. So who's speaking to me? I mean, I can relate to the Father and I can relate to Jesus, and, uh, but, but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy, who is the holy Spirit? And does the Holy Spirit have a mouth? And, is he, and how does all this, how does all this work? I'm going to give you guys a couple things. I'm going to ask every one of you to take out your notes. By the way, for all of our guests, I put notes in your bulletin. I think it's something about looking on your notes, filling things out. You'll be able to keep that with you. I want to begin by talking about first. So if the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, who is the Holy Spirit? Number one, I want to say this. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. Jesus himself referred to the Holy Spirit as a divine person. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 7, here's what the Bible says. Nevertheless, this is Jesus talking. All right, here's what he says. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. You're going to benefit from this. These disciples have been walking with him for three years. It's to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send. Everybody say, what's this next word? Say it. Him, personal pronoun, to you. You ought to read John chapter 16. How many times? Him, he, not it, but him, personal pronoun. Right? We, we took English in school. So why is that important? If you and I don't understand that the Holy Spirit is not an it, the Holy Spirit is not a force, the Holy Spirit has power, but the Holy Spirit is not a power, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. And let me tell you this, a person can be grieved. A person communicates. A person needs to be recognized. You know, I've been married for, it'll be 24 years this summer, and uh, I'm growing as being, becoming a better, better husband. Come on, all the men said amen. Come on, all the men said amen. We want to be good husbands, great husbands, right? And it's funny, last week I talked about date night. I heard some women shout out, that's right, preach, pastor, preach. But anyway, he needs to take me. But anyway, I won't mention names. What's interesting is, is that, you know, being married, one of the things that my wife would tell me all the time, here's what she'd say. She said, Steve, you know, and I, when I walk in a room, I mean, you, don't, don't, you, you get so engrossed. I'm a book reader. I, I read books and I, get, I can get so ensconced in a book that I, I can get so involved. I can get so tunnel vision. She's like, Steve, I'm standing over there. And I mean, it would be, it would be nice and acknowledgement. 
So I got a little bit better first five years of marriage. I was like, what's up? I mean, you know, that's a cold night in bed. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, you gotta get, there's gotta be some warmth and some love. I mean, you know, I'm talking. So finally, it's like, I, 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 I figured this out and I'm getting better in this. My wife is a what? A what? A person and all persons need to be what? Acknowledged. The Holy Spirit is a divine what? Say it. Person. That's why he needs to be, say it, acknowledged. Number one, the Holy Spirit is a person. Pastor, where does the Holy Spirit live? I'll tell you where the Holy Spirit lives. I'm going to ask you to put my chart up again. The Holy Spirit lives in the hearts of believers. Remember what I said the first week, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are Trinitarians. We, we believe in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's three parts. One God, three different persons. Father, everybody say Father. Say Son. Say Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? We're made in the image of God, and guess what we are? We are Three, tripartite. We have a body. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, but we are a what? Say it. Spirit. Pastor, where does the Holy Spirit live? The Bible says before you're a Christian, our spirit is dead. But when we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our spirit. The Bible says our bodies are actually the temple of the who? Say it. Holy Spirit. So, Pastor, where does the Holy Spirit live? I'll tell you where the Holy Spirit lives. The Holy Spirit lives in the hearts of redeemed men and women of God. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. The Spirit of God lives in you. The Spirit of God is, is, is talking to you. He's loving you. He's encouraging you. He's admonishing you. He's warning you. Listen, the Spirit of God does not speak externally into the believer. It's inside out. The Spirit of Almighty God. And there's a partnership. There's a partnership with God, the Holy Spirit. Listen, when you understand who Christ is and you're a Christian and he gives you his spirit, it's a partnership we enter into. A divine partnership where, where God partners with us and, and we begin to walk with God. And listen, we check in with headquarters and God gives us direction and insight about our lives. So, so powerful. There's a scripture in Corinthians, one of my favorite scriptures, talking about the daily partnership of the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And by the way, the Trinity's in this verse. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Look, look what Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, second person of the Trinity, and the love of God, the Father, first person of the Trinity, and the communion of the what? Say it, the Holy Spirit be with you. The word communion is the word partnership. We can have an intimacy, a partnership. Wait, Pastor, time out. So are you telling me that the Holy Spirit is our partner in life? Yes, but I want to qualify one thing. He's not the junior. He's actually the senior partner. So we, we work for him. But he's the senior partner. So in other words, he's speaking to you. He's speaking to you in your marriage. He's speaking to you as a single person. He's speaking to you about your children. He's speaking to you about your business. He's speaking to you about what, what, what school to go to and, and, and should you purchase this, this thing? Should you move to, should you take a job to this city? If we'll pray and ask the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, he's our senior partner. He partners with the dream that God the Father put in your heart. He partners with you, listen, to, 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 to see all the things that God has put in your life to come to pass. Why would we not recognize God, the Holy Spirit? Why would we not daily commune with God? The Holy? Why, why would we not, listen, why would we leave out one third of the Trinity when God the Holy Spirit has been sent by Christ to be our partner in life? The Holy Spirit is a communicator. The question is not whether or not God is talking. The question is whether or not we are, say it, listening. It reminds me of a story about, a funny, it's actually a funny story I, I read recently about New York City. There were some scientists that found traces of copper cables. Some of you guys may have read this, 10 feet below the, the surface. And, and they determined that, that like 100 years ago, New Yorkers had this advanced like telephone system. It's crazy. I don't know if y'all saw that or not. Not to be outdone. I don't know if you saw this, but in Los Angeles, that they discovered, there were some archaeologists or whatever, scientists discovered that actually 20 feet down, that Los Angeles, before New York, had like 200 years ago, they found, they, they found this copper cable from 200 years ago. They've determined in Los Angeles, 
that there was like an advanced communication stru structure that's like surpassed New York. And then I read that Boudreaux, he lives outside of Homa, <laughs> he dug down, not 10, not 20, but 30 feet right next to a bayou. Listen to me. He dug down there because he said not to be outdone. And Times Picayune reported this. That, that, that Boudreaux, a self-proclaimed archaeologist, 30 feet down, he saw nothing, and he proclaimed that, listen, Homa has been wireless for 300 years. You know, <laughs> I just want to let y'all know that, wireless. Let y'all know that. We're advanced. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Praise God. We're definitely advanced above Los Angeles. Can I have a big amen? amen. Did you feel that? I better stop. I'll say it. All right, let's just move forward. I'll lose the partnership of the Spirit or he'll spank me. All right, here we go. I want to talk to you guys. I want to just give you guys something. I'm going to talk about the two primary ways that I see in Scripture that the Holy Spirit speaks. Number one, I want to talk about the inner witness of the Spirit. And then I want to talk about the inner voice of the Holy Spirit, the inner witness. Two ways the Holy Spirit speaks. Number one, Paul writes to the church at Rome, and he talks about this inner witness. What does it mean to have, you ever had somebody say, man, I just felt the witness of the Spirit. Well, what does it mean that you feel the witness of the whole? What does that mean to feel the witness of the Spirit? Paul writes and he says, for as many, I'm giving you, I'm giving you, some of you guys may have heard that, maybe you heard your grandmother or your grandfather talking about the inner witness. I'm giving you the scripture that that's based upon. Here it is. Two primary ways God speaks. I'm going to talk about the inner witness and then the inner voice. Watch the difference. Romans 8 verse 14, for as many, Paul writes, as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons or daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of a bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. That's when you got born again. When you got born again, your spirit came alive and the Holy Spirit came to live and take up habitation and residence in your spirit by whom you've received the Spirit. Now watch this. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself. There's the him. What's these next two words? Say it. One, two, three. Bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. Pastor, what are you saying? What I see in the Bible is that the Holy Spirit, this is one of the clearest places in Scripture where there's this communication link between God's spirit and our spirit, where the Holy Spirit, watch this, bears witness that we're a child of God. The Holy Spirit, I, I've heard preachers say, you just know it in your knower. It's like deep down on the inside. It's like you know that you know that you know. You know it in your knower. Pastor, what are, you, what are you talking about? You know it and you know. Let me tell you, this transcends our cognitive reasoning skills. It transcends the intellect. It, it, it's, it's a witness of the Spirit, not your emotions. It impacts your emotions, but this is not your emotions. It's the witness of the Spirit. And there's something so, let me just say, there's so something so powerful when a believer begins to li listen to the inner witness of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is speaking. It's kind of like I've had the opportunity at different museums. I, I never forget years ago, my grandmother brought my, my, my brother and I to, to Paris years ago. We went to, 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 the, to the Louvre, and you see this, this incredible art. And, and, and we were in, in Europe and all these incredible museums. And it's interesting, you know, there's levels of, of, of art appreciators. Okay, there's levels. I'm like level one. You, you, you go see these incredible, incredible paintings. Let me give you the, the, the difference. An eight-year-old will go up and they'll see like a, like a family sitting at a, at a farmhouse table. And a kid will go, that's a cool picture of a family. But then somebody that's developed in art appreciation, they'll walk up there and they'll see a different symbolism attached to it. Look who's there, look who's not there. What was going on in the background? Why was that person's head turned that way? And then you'll get an art expert. They'll walk up there and they'll say, oh, no, no, no. 
I know the time period in which this was written or, or draw because I can see this and the shade of this. And, I, and you're like, how did you get that? Because there's, 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 I'm going to say this. That's a deep level of art appreciation. Do you know what is so wonderful when you get somebody who's been walking with Jesus for a long time and they're not just bumbling around, but, but, but they're, but they're listening and I'm not talking about weird and mystical and spooky where you're at lunch. Stop. God's talking to you. I'm not talking about that. But they're, 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 they're not just looking at a farm table. They're appreciating what God is saying to them. God is whispering to them at work. God is whispering them about their family. There's a, there's a level of understanding the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. That's not my emotions. Look up here. I want everybody to see this. I'm not feeling that because that's an emotion. That is God witnessing with my spirit. He's talking to me. God is speaking to me. It's interesting. I began to think about the different inner witness, the ways the inner witness works. Let me give you two. Number one, God will give you what's called an inner warning, a distinct impression or a warning. How many times can you guys say, man, I prayed about something, pastor, I'm a prayer, but I just, I didn't feel right about it. I, I felt like I felt a check. You ever heard that before? That's where the word I, I felt a check came from. By the way, you guys are going to be studying your, in your study this week, in your Bible study, more dynamics about hearing God, but you'll, you'll, you'll understand there, there's this, there's a distinct, you're, you're, pray, you're a praying woman, you're a praying man, and the Holy Spirit gives you, gives you a check. Do you know this happened throughout the Bible? Paul was an apostle and, and, and he was going throughout Europe in different places and he was opening up different regions for the gospel. And there's times when the Holy Spirit would speak to him and say, go. But there's times the Holy Spirit would say, no. Acts chapter 16, here's, a, here's an inner witness, here's a check. Paul's receiving a check. Here, here it is. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit... There was a, there was a, there was an inner, there was a, the spirit did not permit them to go. What, 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 what things have we walked through that we shouldn't have walked through if we would have just been listening to the spirit? How many times was, 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 was God, was God saying to us, the bridge is out, the, the, the bridge, you're, you're going, you're, you're going forward, but the bridge is out. You, there, there's danger ahead. Are we listening to the inner witness of the Spirit. How many times where God is wanting to speak to each one of us as we're cultivating that sense of, uh, of understanding. Now I'm going to talk, the, again, being accountable. We've got to be accountable to the Lord and spending time in the Bible. But, but we, can begin to, we can begin to rely upon the voice of God, the inner witness of God's Spirit. God will give you a red light. Don't do it. God will give you a yellow light. Proceed with caution. Or number two, God will give you a green light. Let me give you another thing about the distinct impression. I, when I pray about something, and I'm praying, I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? Oh, Lord, speak to my heart. At times, there'll be a red light. Don't do it, Steve. At times, there'll be a yellow light. Proceed with eyes wide open, cautiously. At times, I just feel a peace in my heart. It's a green light. Colossians, Paul said this. He said, let the peace of God... Rule in your hearts. That's the Spirit of God. There's a peace. It's not because all the circumstances are lined up. It's because God, the Holy Spirit, has witnessed with your spirit. This is the way. Walk in it. I'm talking to you, son. Go for this. Follow my voice. Follow my spirit. I, I never forget, I was, um, so I was a shoe salesman. That's what I initially, I was at Tulane University. I was a shoe salesman. And this, this gentleman, who later became a mentor in business to me, we were at morning prayer, and he says, God spoke to me, and he said that um, <clears throat> I'd like to have breakfast. I'd like, to, I'd like to talk to you about my business. I'd like to talk to you about the, the, this opportunity that I have. I thought, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. We went to, to Shoney's. How I many you know that's, that's where you go as a Christian in the 80s? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Many a times, I almost... Would go back in a sin, and Pastor Doug would call me and say, Hey, brother, let's go to Shoney's. Shoney's. You know, Shoney's has translucent shrimp. You know, those aren't real. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Those are from hell. Let me help everybody. We were sitting down there, and uh, his name was Mr. Will, and he became a business mentor to me. We were sitting down, and, 
And he was an older gentleman. He said, Steve, I want you to pray about this. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I was to hire you for my business. What are you making? I said, well, I'm making this. He goes, I will pay you a lot more than that. I really sense that God has got, and I thought, wow, I don't have to pray about that one. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? But all joking aside, he wouldn't let me answer. He said, I want you to go home and I want you to pray about it. i never forget, I prayed about it. And I felt this peace, not because of the money, but because of the direction of the Lord. Listen to me closely. God wants to speak to you. A red light, don't do it. A yellow light, proceed with caution. A green light, go for it. Everybody say, an inner, come on, say it out loud, say an inner, inner witness. Let's listen for the inner witness of the Spirit. I want to talk to you about another way that I, would, I believe that God speaks. Now, I'm the one making this distinction. I think it's important. I didn't read this out of a book other than the Bible, but I just took a historical kind of a, a, a past view of my life in light of the scripture. I believe that God speaks through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit daily to us, that you can hear the voice of God. But this next thing that I'm going to say, I don't believe it's as routine, but I think it's, it's like, it's like a, when God is really trying to get your attention about something, I believe that God will speak to us in what I call an inner voice. Now, not an audible voice. I never heard the audible voice of God. I don't need to. It'd be cool if I did. I've never heard the audible voice of God. I never have. All right? Never have. But I've heard the voice of God in my heart many a time. I, I counted it up. I want to say it's about 30 times in my life where I can say, God, this was so strong. And I want, to, I want to break this down. I wrote this down. The inward voice is different from the inner witness because it's more distinct, directional, and proactive in nature. I want to say this again. It's more distinct, directional, and proactive in nature. I wrote this down. It's stronger. It's more of a voice than a nudge. It's typically attached to three things, a life vision, a call, or a specific mission. A life vision, a call, or a specific mission. Now, I want to say this again. You and I can hear the voice of God every single day of our lives. Primarily, it's the inner witness of the Spirit. Red, yellow, green light. All right, now watch this. But when you are making major life decisions, a vision, a call, an assignment. Let me give you an example. Paul, or it's actually in the book of Acts, Philip, this was so powerful. So in other words, the stakes, are, they, they're real high. All right, now watch this. Acts chapter eight, verse 29. The Bible says, and the spirit said to Philip, again, the church is growing, the church is expanding, the church is multiplying, the supernatural, God is speaking, God is, I mean, crazy, incredible things, amazing things are happening. And you have this eunuch who was a, 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 a leader in Ethiopia, the Bible says of the, of the queen's court. So he was a man of prominence and he's reading the book of Isaiah, but he's not a believer. But God had an assignment. Everybody say an assignment. Remember, the inward voice is attached to an assignment, a call, or a vision. God is getting your attention. He doesn't want you to miss it. This is a big deal. Then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard from the reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? The Bible says, and he said, how can I understand unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up with him and sit with him. Interestingly enough, this man got born again. And history tells us, actually, there are tradition and history tells us that this man went back to Ethiopia and became a major influence for a revival and an awakening in that culture. Now, why is that so important? God had an assignment for Philip. Listen to me very closely. When God speaks to you and the stakes are high as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait to hear the voice of God, when God will speak something supernatural. I remember in my own life how many times God has spoken to me in a radical nature. I want to say about 30 times when God was really getting my attention and I was fasting. And by the way, you know, we just finished as a church. We just finished up a prayer and fasting time and 
Do you know that supernatural things happen when we pray and fast? Your ears spiritually grow and get bigger. But, but that goes all the way back to the scripture. God's voice often emerges during times of praying and fasting. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit, what? Say it. Said. Only a person speaks. God is a communicator. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you about your life, about your kids, about your marriage, about your future, about your past, some things that need to be patched up about your present, where you are. The Holy Spirit, listen, as the Holy Spirit said, now separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. It's interesting when I began to think about, and I was putting this together this week, I began to think about Church of the King and our Beyond campaign and where, where God has brought this church. It's interesting, I, 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 somebody texted me this week and they were coming in morning prayer. We had morning prayer uh, every, every morning at church. And somebody took a picture of the sun coming up over the building and the cross here at Little Creek. And they text me, and underneath it, they text me the word that God gave me 20 years ago. Some of you know the story. I was a high school evangelist. I was preaching to teenagers all over South Louisiana, Mississippi, and the Gulf Coast region, and preaching at churches and rallying kids. And my pastor across the lake, I'm talking about the inward voice of God related to a vision, a call, or an assignment. My pastor came and said, Steve, you know, there's this church across the lake on the North Shore, and, and they're looking for a pastor. And man, I, I really feel like you should pray about this. And I said, Pastor, I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. And, and I, I, was, I thought I may have gone to Houston, Texas. My wife and I went to Houston. I'm not sure about this. And I was coming back from Eunice, Louisiana. Anybody ever been to the Boudin capital of the world? Come on thriving metropolis. And I just preached a, I just preached for a church in Baton Rouge. I just preached a youth camp. And I had this big cell phone. How many of y'all remember when cell phones were as big as a briefcase? You, you remember that? And my wife and I, I called her and she, we were talking and right, listen to me, I'm talking about the inward voice. And right at the end of the talk, I said, honey, you know what's crazy? I've been thinking about the North Shore where Pastor Frank had asked me, maybe we should think about considering. And she said, I've been thinking about it too. And I heard a voice, not an audible voice, but an inward voice. And here's what God said. I'm sending you across the lake to raise up a church to touch the region. Today, that guy, or this week, that guy sent me a picture in the cross in our building, and he says, God sent you. Thank you for obeying God when he told you that he was sending you across the lake to touch the region. God will speak to you. Let me give you a couple things about the, uh, the inward voice. Number one, it'll come often with a strong, clear, recurring thought pattern. You can't shake it. You're praying about it. You can't shake it. And, and God is speaking to you. Listen to me. Now, I'm talking about somebody that's in the word, somebody that's walking with Jesus. God's got an assignment. The stakes are high. God will speak to you. I'm telling you about your life future. Where, where, who should you marry? Should you move to that city? What should you do? My grandma's been married three times. She's in heaven now. She was 98 when she died. And uh, I prayed about it the other day, and God showed me that she is actually now bossing Jesus around. I'm just going to be honest. She's a Cajun lady. She cut her own grass with an electric lawnmower till she was 92. We, we had to take her off the thing. No, grandma, you can't do that. I mean, she was just, she was the toughest. She trapped nutrias, muskrats, minks, and ferrets before school in the bayou in Galliano in the 1930s. Tough woman. She'd been married three times. All of her husbands died. The first one died. The second one died. She married the third guy, Gene. She found him somewhere. I don't know where. I mean that. She was on a trip. She brought him back and he obeyed her. Trust me. I'm telling you. Problem is Gene had an alcohol problem. I was a young Christian. I remember my first year being a Christian and Gene had an alcohol problem. And Gene was gone. Gene was, it disappeared for a day. My grandma and all my, I'm talking about the inward voice. Stay with me. I've got three or four minutes. Stay, this is so important. God will speak to you. The stakes are high. God will speak every day through an inner witness. Red light, yellow light, green light. But I'm telling you, life vision, stakes are high, assignments. And I was a young believer and 
My grandma's about to call the police. And she said, Steve, I think we should call the police. My mom came over there and they're all, and I just said, I'm going to do something. This sounds crazy. I'm a young Christian. I'm going to go pray. I know this sounds crazy. I'm going to go pray. And I'm going to ask God to show me where he is. I never forget. I walked and all of a sudden I had this thought in this picture in my mind of the, don't raise your hand, of the cabaret lounge on Transcontinental. If you're laughing, you've been there many times. And I felt this in my spirit. Listen to me. May God be my witness. I've said this story before. And I had that thought so strong. And I said, Grandma, don't call the police. Don't call the police. I know where he is. She said, May Shai, you know where he is. She's Cajun lady. I said, I'm telling you, I'm going to go get him. I'm, I drove to the cabaret lounge on Transcot. May God be my witness. And I had this strong thought. This strong, when I got to that bar, I pulled up. May, I'm telling you, may God, God, may God be my witness. He was standing drunk out of his mind, walking out of that bar, about to walk off the ledge and get in his car. Who knows? He would have died, killed somebody. Let me tell you, the stakes were high. God has assignments for you, and God will speak to you through an inner voice. God will speak to you. The inward voice is very directional in nature. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. I'm talking about God will get your attention. When God wanted us to start Church of the King, when God wanted to see Gene's life saved, God spoke to me about marrying my wife. A very clear word. A very clear word. Don't ever make a major decision without praying and seeking God like that. Isaiah 30, verse 21. I'll close with this. Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear you. A voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in. Turn neither to the right or the left. Many of you know I was training. I have a degree in rhetoric from school. I was a pre-law major and I was going to go and, and, and go to law school. My junior year, I was praying over whether I should do that. My dad was an attorney. I thought maybe this is the route I should take. I remember praying and crying out to God, God, what do you want me to do? Lord, should I do that? Lord, I'm not sure if there's any lawyers that are even saved. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm saying that. I'm just joking. My dad's an attorney. A lot of people in my family are. I said, Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do? And I felt like I could have been a good Christian, Lord. I really believed that. But the Holy Spirit of God spoke to me and said, you're not going to do that. I've called you to ministry. I never forget walking to my mom saying, Mom, I want y'all to sit down. I'm not going to go. I'm going to finish college. I'm not going to go to law school. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Turn neither to the right or the left. I told my mom and dad, I said, Listen, I'm going to graduate from college, but I'm not taking my LSAT. I said, I'm going to Bible school. Y'all remember what my mom said? She started crying. She went, Oh my God, my son's going to be so poor. Jesus. Y'all remember that? Remember, they prayed for me for seven years to get saved. I guess I got too saved. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You'll hear a voice behind you. I want everybody to stand. 